Hello overclockers, I'm Ian Parry, also known as the world famous overclocker 8 pair. You may have already seen or watched my Fredripper 7000 series video. If you haven't, I suggest you check that one out as it's a prequel to this video. To watch that, check the links in the description below. In this video, what I'm going to be covering is basically does Octo Channel, which is offered on the WRX90 platform, have a marked improvement on performance when you compare it to the quad channel format of TRX50. So, that being said, let's get into it. So, to make this testing uniform on both TRX50 and WRX90, obviously I'm going to use the same memory modules at the same speed with the same density. And the memory modules I'm testing here are by Micron, and those were 96 gigabyte in capacity, that's per module, 4,800 megahertz DDR5 RDIM modules. So obviously in quad channel, that meant I was uh, using 384 gig, uh, and in octo channel, I'm now using 768 gigabytes of capacity. For this testing of WRX90, to actually run in octo channel, we have to choose a Threadripper Pro CPU. Remember the non-Pro 7 series models can only work up to quad channel. So for this one, I chose the 32 core 64 thread 7975WX model. And I basically chose this because it's probably gonna be the most popular CPU in the stack. And also it runs at the highest clock speed or I could overclock it to the highest clock speed and hopefully therefore really boost the bandwidth. Uh, when overclocking this, on water cooling, 5.2 gigahertz for all loads was quite easily possible. So, for all this testing, I used uh, the WRX90 board that we have on the desk next to me here. This is a pre-production sample by ASRock, uh, and it's from their WS range. Now, I can report that even though this is a pre-production sample, the overclocking uh, was absolutely excellent and the board was stable throughout all my testing. And although eight sticks is double the stress, if you like, on the memory control of the CPU, I had no problems with getting 768 gigabytes of memory stable with the exact same overclock as I could on the TRX50 board. So initial testing on this board tells me that this is a very solid board. Now, I think at this point, it's, it's uh, important to also mention that uh, that's not the only benefit of uh, WRX90 compared to TRX50. The WRX90 uh, motherboard also, when you pair it with a Pro CPU, offers you 128 PCI Express lanes uh, versus the 48 uh, that you've got on the TRX50. And it also offers literally double the capacity as well as obviously double the channels of memory. So on the TRX50 board, you can only have up to one terabyte capacity, whereas on this particular platform here, you can have two terabyte. So essentially this platform's a more premium platform and it exploits everything available on that Pro CPU. So more PCI Express lanes, more memory channels. So. That's the hardware that I used for this testing, and obviously I accompanied that with my Stenders, Windows install, 4090, and so on and so on. Everything that I did on the previous video for testing the CPUs within the TRX50 format. So in the WRX90, what did we actually see just from going from four memory channels to eight memory channels? Basically, quad channel versus octo gave us a 3.3% improvement in our overclockers blender render test. It gave us a 10.5% improvement on Cinebench 2024. It gave us a 1.3% improvement on Cinebench R23. On the V-Ray test, we got an increase of 7%. And on Corona, we saw an increase of 4.4%. Corona being obviously the rendering benchmark that we covered previously. I also did some testing uh, in Linux when running FEA style simulations, if you like, uh, that many of our customers tend to run. Uh, and, and I saw in Abacus around an 18% improvement and in Optistruct around a 20% improvement. From those performance results, we can see that some apps uh, take use of having that extra memory bandwidth more than others. But I guess if you average out the results across the whole stack that I just mentioned, we've got around a 10% increase in performance, which is certainly worth having if you are gonna spend extra on the Pro CPU. So, in summary, 
what is WRX90 for and who does it really uh, suit? I would suggest that this platform along with the Pro CPUs really suits the very, very high end user who wants to tune in to the last 10 to 12% of performance and of course are willing to pay for that extra performance because the extra cost of the motherboard, CPU and memory is much more than the 10% improvement that you gain. Now of course if you're a company who are rendering something that maybe takes three days uh, and you're saving uh, over 10%, that's quite a big chunk of uh, performance but if you're you know just doing a little bit of uh, media work yourself and you you do the odd render that maybe takes 50 minutes or an hour I certainly wouldn't plump for this platform I'd also be looking at this platform if you need uh, massive multi GPU support anything over uh, three GPUs you can still get full lanes on here in fact you can, there's no problem with plugging seven GPUs into this uh, platform and obviously, if you want to really stack out the PCI Express slots with extra PCI Express 5.0 uh, generation drives and you need that extra speed, again, this platform is suitable for you. Obviously, currently we have uh, eight pack Threadripper bundles on the TRX50 platform. And as soon as this platform is officially launched and we have stock of the motherboards, I will be introducing a range of bundles on this particular motherboard. If there's anything that you need uh, that may not be listed on our website, obviously contact us because we are currently developing a whole range of servers and systems operating on this particular platform, including those up to five, six, or even seven GPU, and a new supernova rig to be one of my flagships, which will sit right at the very top of the range. And as always, don't like the video, don't subscribe to our channel, and certainly don't follow me on any socials, but do check out my PCI lens.